Welcome to Juice & Java, Syracuse University's only morning talk show. I'm Jordan Rosenberg. And I'm Jamie Weiss. And this has been a crazy semester so far. You know, things have really been flying by. Things have been very exciting and there's tons of stuff going on on campus, which is also very exciting. I know. You know, it's crazy to think that we came back and, you know, it's already the end of February, beginning of March, which means spring break is coming up. Are you doing anything exciting for spring break? I am, actually. A few of my friends and I are going to venture north of the border, you know, do as the locals do in Canada. I'll try my hand at skiing, which I've never done, so that's pretty exciting. What about you? I'm just going to go home and visit my family, which is always a great time. I miss them, so it'll be really fun. Yeah, no, that's always the best. I know spring break is a time for a lot of people to go somewhere warm. Which no. I'm so jealous of because it has been freezing here in Syracuse, which is expected, but yeah. does it make it any easier? No, not at all. I remember I woke up, you know, the morning of that huge store, snowstorm. I looked outside. I was like, oh my goodness, what do I do? There's too much snow on the ground. <laughs> and Jamie's from Texas, so she's not really that used to it, but me being from Philadelphia, I wasn't even used to those negative degrees. Yeah, it was a little scary, you know, having to wear my snow boots for the first time, but the weather started to clear up a little bit right in time for Valentine's Day. Which is always a fun holiday. Some people love it. They get to spend time with their significant others, but for me, I just spent time with my friends, watch movies, ate candy, ice cream. Which is like always the best, you know, movies is kind of like the staple for Valentine's Day, you know, one movie I always think of is Valentine's Day the movie. Yes, that's always a favorite. I personally love The Notebook. The Notebook is a great one. Oh my gosh, Ryan Gosling, every time he gets me. So this Valentine's Day was one of my favorite memories, but some of our Juice and Java reporters went on campus and asked students their worst Valentine's Day memory. So let's take a look. Um, I would say one time in middle school, like sixth grade, I had a crush on um, this boy who's like my best friend. And I went to go play a mail time in his locker and I ended up playing in the wrong locker, so it was really awkward. I'm not on time so I don't have any memories. I don't know. Um, I'm very great. One of those corny um, that one I think first I wrote to my crush and she wore so much Well, it was really good. And my friend stole from my My worst Valentine's memory is a few years ago I asked this girl out that I've had a crush on for a long time and she kind of rejected me. So later that night I had like one of those scenes that you see in a movie. I went home, bought a box of chocolates, sat down, watched a romantic comedy and just sat by myself the whole night eating a box of chocolates. Um, sophomore year, my boyfriend and I were celebrating our Valentine's Day slash like six months we were great. And my roommate came and crashed our dinner. So a couple years ago I went to ask a girl if she wanted to be my Valentine and I walked up to her, politely handed her a card. She looked at it, read it, smiled, started to cry, slapped me in the face, and then walked away without saying anything. And yeah, that's my worst Valentine's Day experience. Okay, so last year my friend came out to dinner. Welcome back. I'm joined here by Robin Berkowitz-Smith, and she is the co-chair for Orange After Dark. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So what would you say is Orange After Dark? Well, it's an amazing program, but basically what it is is a late night events that we do from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and the events all happen between at least 10 o'clock at night and 2 in the morning. So we've been doing it for about three years, and we started because we were hearing students talk about there's really nothing to do on the weekends, just the parties, and um, we thought, well, let's try something a little bit different, and there was some skepticism <laughs> that people would show up on a Thursday night at midnight or Saturday, and three years later, it's going great, so. So really it's definitely a great alternative to, you know, the party scene, but mm -hmm. what would you say, I guess, has been your favorite program that you've put on? Well, let's see. There are lots of fun programs, um, and we try to do different things. So we do uh, Fright Night at the fair, and for those of you that have seen, we actually brought the real alien and wolf man on campus in the dining centers. And when we started that program, 
three years ago, we tried to sell 200 tickets and we sold out. And this past year, we sold out at 750 tickets. So the cool part about these programs are we shut down the facilities. So whether we go to Wonderworks or Hal Caverns or Fright Night at the Fair, it's just us uh, at SU. And of course, our movie premieres, we had Hunger Games. And that was another huge success. We had 750 students go to the Hunger Games, too. Yeah, I know. Both programs you mentioned, I actually went to this past semester. So Good it job. was a lot of fun, you know, just trying something new, like getting out of your comfort zone, hanging out with friends, and like doing something fun. Mm -hmm. And so I see right now the shirt you're wearing has the logo. Yes, so how can people get involved in Orange After Dark? Uh, well, it's not really an organization, so it, there's, it's run by the Division of Student Affairs and it's sponsored by the Division of Student Affairs, so it's really staff that put this program together. However, we work with different student groups, Residence Life does, uh, to help us with volunteers. So we scan cards when you're on the buses and we have volunteers at the venues, uh, so we work with RHA, we work with NRHH, some of the organizations. But really, the best way to get involved is to go to our website, and we read the feedback all of the time there. And after each event, we also do evaluations right on the bus, and we ask students what they want us to do. So that is really, really helpful. So that would be the best way. Great, and what would you say are some exciting new programs coming up this semester? Okay, well we just went snow tubing on Friday, wow. and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and I, I was actually going so fast I went over the ditch, but oh. I'm safe and I'm <laughs> one piece. Uh, we also have Dave and Buster's, which is brand new since they opened, and that is coming up on February 6th. Um, the only thing is we're sold out. We did sell out within two days on that. And then the one after that, we're going back to Greek Peak and they have a indoor water park with wave pools and tubing. And that is coming up on February 28th. And our movie premiere this year is Divergent. All right, well, those all sound so exciting. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming to the show. Thank you. And you know, that's not the only way to get involved in some sort of entertainment. Some of our Juice and Java reporters want to go interview the dancers from DanceWorks about their upcoming show. So let's take a look with what they had to say. I'm here at Flanagan Gym, and behind me, DanceWorks is working really hard for their upcoming show. Syracuse University has a lot more to offer than you probably think, and if you like the arts, especially dance, DanceWorks is something you should definitely check out. Let's go take a look. Will you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? Will you I'm here with Katherine Robinson, one of the dancers for DanceWorks. So can you explain what exactly is DanceWorks? Right, so I've been in DanceWorks since my freshman year last year, and it's one of the biggest club sports on campus. Everyone auditions in October, and then we have dances running through the entire year until um, the show at the end of February. And so you can audition for up to three your first year. I'm in four this year. And so um, it's an hour and a half a week per dance. Yep. Very cool. So what is your position in DanceWorks? I'm the assistant producer this year, and I was also the homecoming co-director. So we already had one show back in October, and I kind of ran all of that. So now um, I'm just kind of helping out our producer for the upcoming show. Oh, very cool. And what is your favorite dance this year? That's a tough one. I don't know if I could pick my favorite dance, but I'm in um, our director's dance this year, and I wanted to be in it so badly last year and didn't get it, so that was like my goal for this year was to try to get into her dance. So I'm in that one, and then Morgan's is my other favorite one. That's what's going on right now. Um, it's to Young and Beautiful, so really big song right now, and it's really sassy and fun. So what are you most excited about for the upcoming show? I think I'm definitely most excited for Tech Week this year. That's the week leading up to the show. We have dress rehearsals for that entire week. Pretty much every night we're in Goldstein Auditorium practicing. And that's the night that everyone in the entire show is there. So I have friends there in other dances that I don't get to see every week, but that's the time that everyone's all in there together. And then my parents are coming for the show. So it's really nice when um, you get to see everyone's family and everyone's just really hanging out a lot that week. 
So for students that want to come to the show and get involved, what is the information and the dates and times? Right, the show is the last weekend of February, first weekend of March, that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I think ticket sales are starting um, within the next few weeks, yeah. definitely. And, and for students that want to get involved, do they have to wait till next semester to audition? They do have to wait until next semester, um, but it's really exciting in the fall. We have workshops starting really early, so as soon as you get back um, from summer break, we have workshops starting before auditions to kind of get people back into the swing of things. And then auditions is a whole day long process, but uh, it's definitely worth it afterwards. And our practices, um, run up until the show and then we actually it's exciting because after the show ends in February we have those workshops again afterwards so we're not completely done yet. So be sure to mark your calendars and save the date for DanceWorks. The girls have been working so hard and the dances are incredible. Tickets are three dollars for students and five dollars for staff. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome back to Juice and Java. I'm here with Mike Rogers to talk about the upcoming Academy Awards. Thank you so much for coming today, Mike. Not a problem. Happy to be here. Thanks. Great. So let's get started. Obviously, the most coveted award is Best Picture. What do you think is going to happen with that? Well, unlike last year, where we were like pretty sure that Argo was definitely going to win Best Picture, at least I was, um, this year there's not really a clear-cut winner. I mean, you've got movies like American Hustle, you've got Her, um, you've got Wolf of Wall Street, uh, and then you've got 12 Years a Slave, which I think is probably the front runner there. Um, but you know what? I'm not sure. A lot of people want Hustle to win, but you know, I don't really know if Hustle was best picture material. It's a great, great movie. Yeah. Um, great characters, but uh, you know, a little bit of a shaky plot. Um, as much as I would like her to win, I don't think it's going to win. I think it's probably going to come down to Hustle or Twelve Years a Slave. Um, and 12, Twelve Years a Slave, just being the nature of what the movie is, might get the might get the win. Yeah, of course. And then of course we have lead actor and actress. What about those two? Yeah, well, lead actor is another tricky one because. It's, you know, it's like Leo's, like, last shot to get, like, to win an Oscar. Because he really deserves an Oscar. Let's, let's yeah. face it. He's a great <laughs> actor. Um, I just don't think he's going to get it for Wolf of Wall Street. Because it was great. And the, and the movie was good. But it was, it was a little too long. But um, very enjoyable movie. But, uh, you know, I think it, it might go to Christian Bale. Uh, I think he was great in Hustle. Christian Bale is one of my was, favorites. Yeah, he was, the best, <laughs> he was one of the best parts of the movie. Besides Jeremy Renner, who was completely snubbed. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> and then, of course, lead actress. What about that one? Um... I think my pick for that one, Sandra Bullock and Gravity. I think she was really great. Um, I think it was a great, great movie. I don't think it'll win. I think it might win Best Director. Um, I guess we'll get to that later. But, uh, yeah, I think I think Sandra Bullock might might take that away. Definitely. Um, I think Amy Adams. I'm not sure if she's for uh, lead or supporting, but she might win something too. Yeah, of course. And then, as you mentioned, Best Director. Do you have any other? options except for gravity i i really think gravity is going to win for that one I, that and like sound editing and sound mixing i mean gravity i don't know if you've seen it but it, it was like it was an amazing experience i saw it in the imax 3d wow that's awesome and it's like the sound is different when you're inside of like sandra bullock's helmet when you're outside of the helmet oh wow and it's just it's a really innovative experience i think that's got best director and then every year we always have those unexpected nominees what do you think about those this year yeah, I mean, well, Dallas Buyers Club, I feel like, kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I think Matthew McConaughey might win something for that. I think that was kind of racking up at the other award shows. Um, I personally haven't seen it yet, but I hear really good right. things about it. Uh, and then you got things like Iron Man 3 and The Lone Ranger, which are, like, up for Oscars. But that's <laughs> just for, like, you know, like, sound editing and stuff like that and the visual effects. Right. Um, and uh, then, of course, you've got some other movies like, like Frozen, which... You know, it's it's pretty clear, like, Frozen's going to win anything it's nominated. Yeah, for. it was a great movie. I saw it, and I loved it. Yeah, I've seen it, like, twice <laughs> already, so it's, it's a great film. Do you have any personal favorites this year? Um, I love Her. Her was, I think, the best movie of the year. Uh, Inside Lewin Davis deserves something. Um, I really like Gravity a lot, and, you know, even though I think a lot of people are kind of putting American Hustle down a little bit because it was, like, so revered. Mm -hmm. I loved American Hustle. Yeah. Um, regardless of how shaky the storyline was in the middle, um, it's great. They have great actors. You've got Louis, Louis C.K. I mean, anytime Louis C.K. is in a movie and he's really good, I love it. I love that. Right. <laughs> and then, do you have any last comments for today? Yeah, I mean, you got to watch the award. It's going to be a great show. Um, 
and you, you got to just like vote for your favorites, root for them. You got to fill out those like award like those nomination. Like, oh guesses, yeah, definitely. And then just like bet on so it, and win fun. tons of money. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> my that's my recommendation for all of you is make lots of money. Thank you so much, Mike, for coming today. I really enjoyed hearing your opinions on Absolutely. the Oscars. So another show was viewed by thousands this year, and it was, of course, the Syracuse vs. Duke basketball game. Some of our Juice and Java reporters went out and interviewed people that were waiting in line outside the Dome. Let's check it out. Hi, we're here at Gady at the Carrier Dome, where students have been camping out for two weeks now to get front row seats to see Syracuse play Duke, their new rivals in the SEC championship. So let's see what they have to say. Well, we came out not this past Sunday, the Sunday before, yeah. so I guess it's been like nine days now so been out here for a while how long the shifts do you guys have normally the day shift or the night shift or? it depends mm -hmm. you know we switch in and out you know depending on who has class and who can do the overnight so like the overnight shifts tend to be the longest when you're here during the day you're typically only here for like three to five hours at a time so the way it works is you can have up to four people in your group yeah. um and then from that point forward one person from your group has to be there um, at all times. You get like a 15 minute window if you need to use the bathroom or if people are coming to and from class. But we'll call list checks sort of randomly throughout the day. And um, you've got, you know, you either have to be there or have 15 minutes to get here um, or you lose your spot. So you like seeing everyone just kind of camping out and really showing their spirit for the game? I think it's fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I do. But we do have another group at Gate D. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think they go in to Gate B to go to the bathroom and stuff, so I, I kind of like it. Would I, you ever be willing to stay out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not today because it's like 7 degrees. No. Yeah. So long, do you have any really good tips to staying warm? Um, well, this year, especially with the sub-zero temperatures, we are double bagging our sleeping bags. Um, I mean, last a couple days ago, I slept in a hat and a vest just to keep myself warm, bring extra blankets, but just like try to keep yourself hydrated and just try to stay warm as best as possible. And you want to keep as many layers between you and the ground as possible because the ground's really cold and that seats up. So we've got like towels on, the, well, we've got like Blankets. The tent, and then there's like towels underneath, and then we've got blankets underneath. We have like nat like sleeping pads that go underneath your sleeping bag, and then you're in two sleeping bags. So there's a lot of layers between you and the ground, which helps keep warm. A lot of pairs of pants. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So you guys excited for the game? Do you think SC was a good chance of winning? Um, I think in the last couple of weeks, you've definitely seen Duke kind of fall off, and I think Syracuse is really. Probably gonna crush them, I'm hoping. But I mean, um, Duke did win at Pitt last night. Yeah. So they're definitely a good team, and like, we're also definitely a good team. So hopefully, it's gonna be a really great game. Very exciting. Welcome back to Juice and Java. I'm joined here with Caroline Harris, a sophomore at Syracuse University, but she's also one of the co founders of the Girl Code Movement. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So, I guess, what is the Girl Code Movement? So the Girl Code Movement is a college-focused anti-sexual assault organization. Um, we aim to empower women to become bystanders. Um, we aim to create a support system and overall just bring awareness to this issue that is unfortunately so large on all college campuses. Yeah, so I know this is a very touchy subject, but why did you decide to help you know, start the movement? Well, um, we are all, the co-founder and I, Jackie Riley, Jackie was unfortunately raped on campus and I was a victim of sexual assault before I came to college and we just felt through a lot of conversation and a lot of you know talking about our experiences that they, we didn't really have a choice you know people always say like we're so brave but we're not really brave we're just doing what really needs to be done and um, we just kind of hope we just kind of hope that throughout all of this we could just make any sort of a difference whether it was you know, personal support for us or for others and just kind of at least do something to feel fulfilled after all these traumatic experiences ha have happened. Yeah, well, it's great that you guys have started this. So what are you doing to promote this on Syracuse University's campus and I guess other campuses? Um, well, first, actually, just on Friday, we applied to be a registered student organization. And what we hope to do through that is just um, kind of have the abilities that the, that the university offers in that we can hopefully book a room and hold a really big event for you know all women across campus um, to just talk about this because we're all at risk you know it's 
one in four. It's a very scary and large statistic, but we hope to hold events and kind of workshops and bring in speakers all within the means of empowering women and empowering others. Um, so as for promoting, we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter, um, you know, all the basics of social media, and we've been very lucky in working with a lot of different people to really get our movement going. That's awesome. So what do you think is, you know, your final step for people to get involved? Um, our final step for people to get involved, well, we're going to hopefully have kind of campus representatives in a sense with, um, we'll have some people on our team and we'll, you know, choose them and focus on kind of their friends and their kind of chunk of people at this university and then they'll work on kind of outreaching to them and getting those people involved because Jackie, Julie, and I were all sisters of the same sorority as you are, Alpha Z Delta, um, so, and within the Greek life community. So we want to make sure that we're outreaching to all women on campus and to all people on campus. So um, to get involved, I mean, the most basic is to like our Facebook page. And then if you want to get more involved with us, you can email our, to our Gmail account, too. And I know I did check out the Facebook page, and it's cool because you have like you know like little question and facts. So I guess like what's one example of like a little like fact or statistic? Um, so we have Fact Fridays, um, and one that's the most recent one. President Obama actually addressed this, but in the United States, there's no group more there's no group of people more at risk of sexual assault than college women on campus, which I think really speaks for how you know, incredibly scary and incredibly real this is, that in no time in your life and no place in the world are you more at risk than just being a woman at a university. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for all that no, you're doing. No, thank you for having me. This is wonderful. I know. It's amazing what you guys are doing, and I really hope like it does like pick up and keep up the momentum. So just as Caroline said that the Girl Code Movement has Fact Friday, some Juice and Java reporters and I went to Shine to interview students about some Syracuse University facts. So check it out after the break. Welcome back to Juice and Java. Jamie, I have to say that trivia was so funny. It was honestly so much fun, you know, going out to shine, filming everyone, asking them questions, you know. I'm kind of surprised people either really know their trivia or don't. Do you want to hear some bonus trivia? Yes, of course. <laughs> so, you know, right now our mascot's the orange. Of course. Clearly, but you know, we actually, our original mascot was the goat. Wow. Pretty, pretty surprising. I did not know that. That's crazy. Also, I thought it was so funny how our original school colors are pink and green. Yeah, definitely a pretty girly <laughs> school colors, but yeah, actually. I'm, I'm kind of glad we're back to orange. You know, it goes with our mascot. Yeah, orange and blue is definitely a solid. Good way to go, Syracuse. Definitely a solid color scheme, solid mascot. I'm a fan overall. Yes. Other than the trivia, we had a great show today. Amazing guests. We learned so much. It was so great, you know, getting to talk to Robin about Orange After Dark. I'm so, like, glad the two programs she talked about I got to go to. They were I'm so much fun. so jealous of you. That seems like a great time. I definitely need to check out some Orange After Dark programs, especially because everything is only $3. It's, it's great. It's so affordable. You know, it makes it so nice to get a change from the Syracuse party scene. Yes, and it's, and it's nice. also a great way to get off campus and try something new and really explore what Syracuse has to offer, which is a lot. 
Yeah, no, there's so much. And, you know, we also got to talk to review crew, talk about the Oscars. Which is one of my favorite subjects. And then Caroline about Girl Code. It's such a great movement. It's a great thing, definitely very empowering and just something that really should spread to all campuses. Make sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All the links will be on our Facebook page. Check it out for exclusive content and extra clips. I'm Jordan Rosenberg. And I'm Jamie Weiss. Thank you so much for watching the show. And we'll see you next time.